What is up? What is up? Uh, it's been a while. Kind of took some time to unplug from social media a little bit. And just to... And I don't know where this video is going to go. So I'm going to just say it right off the top. Um, this... Pray that the Holy Spirit would lead and guide my mouth and my words and my heart. And whatever he wants to be said will be said. Um, so before I get started, just thank you, Lord, for this time that we're living in. Thank you for being your awesome self, um, for being our king, for being our creator, for being the only one true God. There is no one besides you. And um, just pray, Lord, that you will get the glory and that anyone who needs to be helped will be helped. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So about a little bit over 50 days ago, almost a couple of months, um, just started a journey, a journey of looking inward. And it, it all be, came about from the holiday, the holy day of Passover, the feast of the Passover. So um, just a little background history. Um, in the book of Exodus, we see the basically the, the family of Abraham. Remember Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons had Father Abraham. All right, if you ever, if you grew up Baptist, um, went to vacation Bible school, you know that song, that song drilled up in your head, even not in just the Baptist um, church. But we know Abraham had many sons, and he had, he was the father of Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob was the uh, father of 12 sons, which ended up becoming the 12 tribes of Israel. And when we get to Exodus, the second book of the Bible, we see that family um, had migrated to Egypt basically because due to a famine. And just the workings of the Lord allowed them to be in Egypt. And while they were in Egypt, they were being oppressed. All right, so just stick with me and just hold on. This is very relevant to the time that we're living in. The people were being oppressed. Um, a Pharaoh had came about they didn't know God. Um, they didn't respect God in his ways or his people. And he just wanted to oppress them so that um, he would be benefited. So when he saw how the children of Israel, how the, the family of Abraham had multiplied and, and grown, he, his mindset was, hey, I got to do something about it. So I'm going to put hard labor on them. I'm going to make their life hard so hard um i want you to he made a decree made a law for them to throw their their sons into the um into the sea into the now to drown them literally so that they would not keep multiplying so he was after the sons he was after the sons he knew that he had to get rid of them he had to kill them and that would break down the family and that's where we see Moses come on the scene. Moses was supposed to have been drowned, but his mother uh, put him into a basket, into an ark, and he was he was saved. Even though she had to put him in the same waters that others were drowning in, Moses was drawn out by Pharaoh's daughter, and she raised him as an Egyptian. So, long story short, he grows up. He does find out that he's truly a, a Israelite. He belongs to um, God's chosen people. And God would have it that he took him on a journey. He let him know that he was going to deliver those people. He was going to be a deliverer for the people who were being oppressed and who were in slavery and bondage. And that's when God told him, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go. 
And of course, we know the story. He didn't let them go. God sent the plagues. He sent signs and miracles and wonders. And Pharaoh's heart just continued to harden and be hardened. But it was all for the glory of God. When you read the end of the story, it was all for, for the glory of God. And after that 10th plague, the 10th plague was to kill the firstborn. If you did not have the blood of the lamb on your doorpost, on the doorpost of your house, on the top, the side, the bottom, if you did not have that blood of the lamb on your door, when he came through the angel of death that night, all of the firstborns were killed. All right, all the firstborns, Egyptians, and anybody who did not obey. Um, because God told him he was going to pass over, but he was going to deliver them through that Passover. All right. So the children of Israel were able to leave on the night of Passover. All right. They had been crying out to God and he heard their cries. He heard their cries like so many people are crying out right now for justice, for freedom from oppression. And he hears our cries. He hears the cries of his people. Um, and he's such a good loving father and king that he does something about it. He didn't leave us in oppression. He didn't leave our people in oppression. He delivered them by his own hand, came down here himself and delivered them. And so every year, um, once he delivered them, they went into the wilderness and God told them about his appointed times, his prophetic calendar. And that's why every year the Passover is celebrated. Um, it's remembered. It's um, because it's a witness and it's a testimony to the power and deliverance of our creator and of our father and of our king. So... As I've learned about the Passover, it's opened up so, so many things. And um, personally, the Lord has delivered me from bondage. And bondage is just, it's, it's sin. Whatever has you bound, whatever um, takes away your life, your joy, your peace, your holiness, it's, it has you bound. And that's exactly where the enemy wants you to be. He wants you to be bound so that you don't live up to your calling and to your purpose. And the children of Israel had a calling and a purpose. And God delivered them. Yes, they had to go through uh, bondage. But once they came out, they knew it was nobody but God who delivered them. And that's the time that we're living in right now. But if we have that blood, if we have the blood of the Lamb, Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, if we have that on our hearts, He is able to deliver us from our bondage, from our Pharaoh, and from the ultimate Pharaoh of this world we know as the enemy. Right? So, He's a way maker. And that's what started me on this journey. And I will be sharing, sharing more. But I just wanted to encourage you. If you're feeling oppressed, if you're feeling in bondage, cry out to the Lord. Yes, your government is there. Um, it's supposed to be there. Uh, it's supposed to be have, have good judges who listen to God, who follow God. But we know that is not the world that we live in. So yes, follow the processes. Do the voting. Um, stand up for injustices. That's what our, our Savior did. He stood up for the poor, for the needy, for those who were oppressed, for those who had been outcast, those who were sick, those who were um, in bondage to spirits. He set them free. He didn't just leave them where they were, and he's not going to leave us. So be encouraged, and we have to cry out to him. He is the one that we put our trust in. We cannot put our trust in man, kings, kingdoms, governments. We have to put our trust in him. 
He is the only one who saves. That's his name. God Savior. The Messiah, Yeshua. Right, so be encouraged. I love you. And we will overcome.